Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the Little Bean and Me podcast channel. My name's Kayleen and I'm your host. Uh, welcome to any new viewers and welcome back to any returning subscribers. I'm happy to have you here with me today, spending a little bit of time chatting about kind of crafty things, what's been going on um, here in my little universe. And then I also wanted to give you an update on how things are going in the shop and things that will be coming into the shop um, in the next week or so. Uh, so yeah, let's just get into everything. In terms of knitting or crochet, I don't have any really new projects that are going on at the moment. I'm still trucking away on my sweater that I showed last week. I haven't made any really significant progress, maybe about an inch of stockinette, but I am working up the back part of my cardigan. And for those who don't know, I'm working on the Georgetown cardigan. Um, it is a mostly seamless pattern. Uh, you can do a seamed version or a mostly seamless version, and I'm doing the mostly seamless version and I'm doing it in some Baraco ultra wool kind of a grayish brownish color neutral for the season um, very excited to be working on it but I need to be vigilant and setting some time aside for knitting and I haven't been doing that in the last week uh, we've been very busy over the weekends everybody's doing wonderfully kids are doing great uh, we had a little bit of a sickness last week. My son ended up with some croup, which is not very fun. Uh, for adults, it's like laryngitis, where you have swelling of your vocal cords caused by a cold. You know, no big deal. We've been through it before. So we are finally on the upswing this week. And so I thought, while my son is actually busy watching some Thomas, which is his favorite, um, I could do a short podcast and just kind of go through everything. So knitting, not so much. Spinning, not so much. Crocheting, not so much. And I've done some dyeing um, since the last podcast. So I believe in the last podcast I showed you um, some of the yarns that I dyed, which was the tree series, which I still have some elder tree and whomping willow available, and some, you know, old dye journal um, deep dives into my dive journal, should I say, where I went back to some really early colorways, reformulated them to fit the current dye style that I have. So I did some Peruvian Instant Darkness powder. I did both potions, the Potion of Dreamless Sleep and the Potion of Despair. On all three of those colors, I still have a couple of skeins available. So if you hadn't come by already, you should definitely check out the links in the description or up here in the iCard uh, for the link to my shop website. Um, I try and update once every couple of weeks. And in the front page of the website, you should be able to see shop the latest update, which is the first slide on the front page and you can click there to see what is brand new in the shop. That's pretty much all of that. Um, I did want to show you the evolution of my little journaling project. So in the last podcast I shared that I was starting to do kind of a bullet journal where I really need to start organizing my day and so I've been setting a timer on my phone religiously to kind of give myself an audio cue for what time of day it is, what really needs to happen during that time of day. And so in doing so, well, I ruined my journal because I <laughs> put some donuts on top of it. <clears throat> so I made myself a new journal, which I'm not sure if I showed you in the last podcast, but I will show you today and the progress that I've made on that. So if you're interested to see that, just sit tight. Okay. So the last journal that I was using was just a moleskin. Moleskin, Moleskine uh, journal, which was lined paper, and I just put it together as a quick, um, a quick to do where I was like, okay, I just need to start writing down tasks for the day, and I ruined it <laughs> by putting a bag of donuts on it, and got a huge grease stain through several pages, and you know, once something like that happens, I don't even want to touch it anymore. I don't want to deal with it, and I just decided that I was going to make a book for myself. So this is the book that I made. Um, it is hand bound and this says life is tough but so are you and I use some um, scrapbooking paper to make the cover binding here and I use some washi tape to decorate the seams. Also use some uh, crafting paper on the inside here 
and I put another sticker that says you've got this because I definitely need that reminder um, through the week. So I started this journal and I went kind of off of bullet journaling. So this is the first part which is the index and I have my key here for my tasks and then here's as far as I've gotten in the journal and <clears throat> and this says get a little better every day so that is my goal is to get a little better every day and here's my schedule that I had in my original journal and then here is my year at a glance so I wrote out all the months for um, 2018 and then also 2019 since there are enough pages in here for me to do both and here I started out my year at a glance so things that I are getting scheduled into the month can be put in um, ahead of time since I don't write the entire journal out ahead of time and I have a page here for dye ideas which I haven't written anything in yet and then here was my month of October and then this says autumn shows us how beautiful it is to let things go and for me when I'm struggling with my mood it's because I'm hanging on to all these little negative things that make me feel bad or make me feel like I'm not good enough or whatever um, and so I wanted to have a reminder every time I turn back that it's okay to just let things go and so here's my month I have all the days written out. I copied over the events from my year at a glance here, which was very helpful. And then this was my first spread for the week when I started, which was October uh, 10th or 11th. That's when I started this journal. And I did my week set out here. And then I have here my tasks for you know each day or my habits so things that I need to do every single day that I'd like to keep track making sure that I'm doing them certain things like breakfast lunch dinner obviously I do every single day but I did want to keep track of these things here and if I did them I filled in the square and if I didn't do it I didn't fill in the square or some of them I have here it shows like half filled so I did it halfway or I only did part of the task and not the other part so I loaded the dishwasher but I didn't run it or I ran the dishwasher but didn't unload it things like that or I brought laundry down but I didn't bring it back up and then I have a section here for my mood as I can see my mood has been not very great um, and last week it wasn't either and then thoughts for the week and here's my scale for my mood and then weekly wins so I wanted to keep something positive here in the journal so I wanted to keep track of things that made me feel good through the week so one I was able to set up my journal I mailed all my packages out which were all of the Halloween boxes and also all of the, the orders that were outstanding from the weekend I cleaned all the fish tanks and I was 90% finished with insulating the pipes in the basement, which was a big deal for me. Um, I didn't do a spread last week, but I did set up my spread for this week. Now, part of the problem is that when I don't do something, I tend to just give up and say like, well, I didn't do it. And so everything is ruined and I'm never doing this again. I find this very enjoyable. And so I didn't do it last week. And because I didn't do it on the day that I planned to do it, I just, my, how do I explain it? <laughs> uh, my brain was like, well, you didn't do it on Sunday, so why bother doing it anyway? Type of thought process, which isn't good. So I decided, you know, I'm not going to worry about it for last week. I'm not going to beat myself up about it. And I'm just going to start fresh this week. And that's what I did. Yes. What's wrong? Hi. You want to watch Thomas again? Okay. 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 So anyway, sorry for the interruption. I had to refresh Thomas. Um, so same thing with filming a podcast or having a die day. If I've planned it out and some for some reason it doesn't happen, my thought process ends up getting very rigid about it. So I didn't do it that day, so why bother doing it at all? And it's like an all or nothing, you've failed. And... 
I've always been that way in terms of like having a level of perfection like I want to do everything perfectly and have everything come out the exact way that I intended and it's not realistic to do that and so I'm trying to remember that it's okay to let things go and it's okay to not have everything turn out perfectly as long as you're trying your best that's really what matters and I give that advice to so many people and I just joke that I really should take my own advice so anyway so this is this week's spread um, as you can see, you know, October 22nd through 28th, I have things laid out here. I also have my habits, which, you know, I just condensed down because now I knew what things I would be tracking. So I track, um, condensed it down. I have my mood, which hasn't been filled in, and my thoughts for this week and my weekly wins. So, so far this week, today is Monday, um, I did November's spread, which I'll show you in a moment. And then some thoughts for the week is leave some kindness for you. And don't weigh your thoughts with yesterday's frustrations, let it go. And that's really <laughs> what I have to remember is that it's okay for things to not happen exactly the way I wanted it to and that I can just let it go. And so today I put together a November spread. So this is November 2018. I decorated with some stickers and some phrases that I'm trying to have as not like a mantra, but you know, words to remember for the month, like just let it go. Or this one says, be kind to you. Today can be great. When you can't find the sunshine, be the sunshine. So trying to, you know, beget positivity. So positivity begets positivity. So I'm trying to really keep those things in mind. So I have my weeks laid out, holidays laid out for November. And I had a little bit of extra space. So I put week one, week two, week three etc. Um, so that is that. And then I haven't done the spread for next week yet. And then this says start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. And that is something that I have to learn to live by is that just because something isn't going the way I want, you know, or if I don't have something that I need, or I feel like something's missing, like I can just do what I can with what I have. And at the point where I am, I can't put, continue to put pressure on myself to be perfect and be something that is impossible to obtain because it's not healthy for me. <laughs> and so I'm really, really working hard. So this book was great. It was really fun to make. Um, it doesn't really have a firm spine here. As you can see, it's pretty loose. It's not perfectly bound. When I bound it up, I was distracted by children, <laughs> as usual. So you can see here inside the binding, if I can get it to focus on, not my face. Um, you can see the binding in there. So each section, it is hand stitched. So you can see the stitching in here was glued, clamped, and then I measured out the press board for what I needed, covered the press board with the paper, then I glued and put in the cover sheets for the inside of the book. And so I really like these, and then I just reinforced the seams with washi tape because, well, I think it looks really cool, and I really like washi tape. I don't know if any of you guys have gotten packages from me, you know how much I love washi tape. I use washi tape to help wrap your packages and because I think it looks really cute and it's really fun. So the paper that's in here is just um, a cardstock and I printed the bullets onto the cardstock. So I didn't even buy a bullet journal, I just made my own bullet journal from something that I wanted. The main goal that I wanted to be able to do would be to actually use markers on the paper and not have any bleed through because that is something that really bothers me. Like you can see here on the diet ideas page, you can't even see um, through this paper. You can't see the marker that's on the other side and there's marker all over the place. So that's really what I wanted to see because I like to use brush markers and I like to draw and so I wanted to, do, to be able to doodle freely if I chose to doodle or to use marker washes of color if I wanted without worrying about, excuse me, without worrying about um, it bleeding through and distracting me because if it doesn't look nice, if I can see through the pages, then I don't like it. So 
uh, anyway, so that was the most recent project that I worked on and something that I'm very proud of. And I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you guys do bullet journaling or you do planning uh, something like that, please definitely leave your comments and tips down below. Um, I'm very eager to hear anything, any tips that you can give or any advice you have for me. So that's it for crafting. Really, that was the only crafting that I did um, this past couple of weeks. I didn't really do much other than that. I did do some dyeing this week, and then I've been doing the unboxing series on Instagram for the Halloween box. Uh, if you haven't been following me over there, definitely do. I always leave links in the description box down below, or I put it here on the screen for you to see, uh, so that you know where to find me. But I have been revealing each day of the Halloween unboxing. The first day was the movie Halloween. It was the release, it was, it started on um, October 19th, which was also the release day for the new Halloween movie. So I thought it was very appropriate to have that be the first day of yarn. And the second day of yarn that I revealed was Scream. And then yesterday was Sunday and I didn't do a reveal because we had birthday parties to be at yesterday. It was a very busy day. So today I'm going to do the reveal for yesterday and today. So you'll have to go over to Instagram to see that. And then I did want to show you what I've been working on for dyeing. I am trying to do more tonal yarns and um, have a little bit more stock in the shop that's a little flexible. So I love dyeing speckled yarns. It's one of my favorite things to do. But I do <laughs> not always have available like ready to ship tonal yarns that complement the speckled yarns. I do try to put into the listing, you know, colors that I would suggest uh, if you wanted to do a dye to order skein for a tonal yarn, but it doesn't always end up that way. And I do get lots of questions or comments about like, oh, just put whatever you think would look nice with this color. This is the project that I'm doing and I'm happy to do so. But I did want to dye up some of the yarn that I have on hand. I do have several uh, bases on hand right now but I wanted to dye up on some yak because it dyes so beautifully and I wanted to do some rich tonals for the fall slash winter season that would go with the deeper more jewel tone yarns or even to go as a nice deeper accent to a lighter speckled yarn and so here I'm going to show you the things that I've been dyeing. So this is kind of what I would call my fall rainbow um where I even these still have the dye ties on them and I'm going to be dividing these into 50 gram skeins so this one is I believe Cabernet and all these are Dharma acid dyes so this is Cabernet dyed on yak so this is um 70 2010 I think it's a 70-20-10 base, so 70% superwash merino, 20% yak, 10% nylon. So it is very squishy and lovely and rich. And so the original color of this base is a gray. And so I wanted to, you know, dye over the gray to give kind of like new life to these colors. So this is Cabernet, right? And this color is saffron. So we have Cabernet and saffron. Also very saturated, very lovely. And then this is Honey Mustard. Um, it's a warmer tone yellow. It comes out almost, um, I don't know how to say, like more crisp on uh, the gray base. So it has those grayer undertones. So maybe like, not crisp, <laughs> maybe more muted maybe muted is the word that I'm looking for and then this color ooh, <laughs> sorry I'm picking these all up and winding them up so you can see them uh, so this color is sunflower so here's the difference between honey mustard and sunflower so this is a little more um, green it's more of a green toned yellow rather than an orange toned yellow Right, and then this is sage, so a lovely sage green. Again, it comes out much more muted. It's got these lovely gray undertones to it. It's wonderful. Apologize if you can hear screaming 
for fussing in the background. Tucker is having a little bit of an issue with his strains um, <laughs> that I'm going to help him with in just a minute, but yeah. Uh, and then this is Aqua. I believe it's called Bright Aqua. And here's the Sage and Bright Aqua. Okay, and then this is Forest Green. It's a lovely blue toned green. So here's Sage, Forest Green, and Aqua all together. I tried to select an entire spectrum of color for this uh, release, and I also wanted to have variations in tone and depth. So, for example, for the greens, I wanted to have something that was a little cooler, maybe a little warmer, and also deeper. So, and so for blue, um, since we have kind of an aqua, I wanted to also pair in this color, which is blued steel. So we have forest green and blued steel. Very nice jewel tones. And then along the pink and purple spectrum, I have several colors here. First we have a uh, deep purple. So this color, it's almost it's a bit like the shirt that I'm wearing right now, but a nice jewel toned purple. Pretty, you know, I, I would say it's pretty neutral. It's not exactly warm or cool. Um, I would call it pretty neutral. Then we have mauve, which is, as the color states, it's mauve. It's kind of that in-between grayish purple color, color, which is really fun, which I recently dyed on merino. I dyed it as an accompaniment to the Affirmations collection, and this is Flamingo. So we have Flamingo, Mauve, and Deep Purple to kind of round out the latter half of the rainbow. And then the last color I dyed, I wanted to have a neutral, or something more neutral, should I say. I didn't want to just do a gray or a brown, so I chose to do Olive, which is a lovely green brown it's kind of it shifts the color of the yarn to be a little more greenish brown it's it's um it's a unique color it's almost it's almost hard to describe so it doesn't quite fall to be so like this would be a lovely combination like this would go with any color that's that was dyed up so <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to hold all these at the same time. There are 12 colors here. <laughs> um, that make up the entire spectrum. And so I'll put the picture here. I took a, a picture of all 12 colors together um, for the entire spectrum. And so what I'll be doing is listing these up as 50 gram skeins. So that there'll be more flexibility in terms of, you don't have to just have a 100 gram tonal skein. You can you know, grab several 50 gram skeins and it will make it easier to mix and match for different colorways or different projects. So if you're doing a shawl that has multiple colors in it or you're doing several pairs of socks under the same color family or you wanted a neutral, you know, you could get a 50 gram skein and you would be able to do a few pairs of socks for heels, toes, and cuffs and things like that. So um, anyway, I thought it would be really fun so that <laughs> you can see all the colors, all quite lovely, all unique, all very different in terms of, you know, whether warm toned or cool toned color, uh, pastel or more saturated. So to give you an idea of what it looks like, the gray versus merino, so this is Flamingo on Merino, and this is Flamingo on Yuck. So it gives such a lovely color. Um, I thought about doing a dye just on the um, Everyday Sock, which is this. It's a fingering weight um, superwash Merino nylon blend. And I thought about doing a gray wash over the Merino first and then dyeing up colors like this. Um, if you're interested in something like that, let me know, but the Yak Sock, I think, does the job very well. And then here's Blued Steel. So this is Blued Steel on Merino, and this is Blued Steel on the Yak. 
it just gives it this lovely deep gray jewelry undertone it's it's wonderful all right and then the last thing that i wanted to show you today is the art that was in the Halloween boxes. So I mentioned to you guys in a previous podcast that the Halloween box is going to have non-food treats that hopefully would delight you um, and you know send tingles down your spine. And so I worked in collaboration with Maura O'Connor who is a local artist to me. She's also my future sister-in-law. Um, she's very talented. She's an illustrator, an ink artist. She does characters she does nature she's wonderful so if you never checked her out definitely do i've mentioned her a few a few times um in the recent months because of this project and so she and i got together and brainstormed a bunch of ideas and my concept was that i wanted to combine horror and fiber arts two of my favorite things <laughs> and i wanted to put a spin on it uh on also, almost like um, on like vintage movie posters where you take the concept or the sl slogan or tagline from the movie and twist it to be related to fiber arts or yarn. And so these are the ones we came up with. Now, the first concept I came up with, which is what kind of sparked me to do this, was for this movie. So this is the blob. And so instead of an amorphous blob, it is a tangle of yarn and it says the horror will never be untangled the blob and so taking over the trailer is this huge entanglement of yarn with um the knitting needles sticking out of it it says who let this happen oh. so this was the first print that was in the box the second one was um a, a suggestion by Mora. she was like what if we used this face and I said, oh, that would be perfect. And so we did a play on the Nosferatu uh, movie poster and his expression here, which is pretty iconic. And it says, do you mind? I'm knitting. And so he's trying to knit here with his fingers because, you know, he can't use wooden knitting needles. That would be a health hazard. And then the last one, this was my idea. This was, this is one of my most favorite horror movies that I actually watched the other day uh, with my husband who had never seen it before. Um, and this is from The Exorcist. And so I wanted to do a play on the vomit scene, which is the most, or arguably one of the most iconic scenes from the movie. And I said, well, instead of vomit, what if um, she was puking up yarn and then knitting with it. And she's like, oh my gosh, that's iconic. So that's this one. And this one says, your mother knits scarves in hell, <laughs> which is a play on the famous tagline of the movie, which I will not say in this video because, you know, it is um, not appropriate for YouTube. And so here's the vomit and she's got her knitting needles and she's knitting this long and disgusting scarf with the, the yarn vomit. So this is the third one. So everybody who purchased a box got all three of these prints, and these are full size, um, eight and a half by eleven prints um, from us to you. So that was the big surprise and treat that was in the box. Aside from the yarn, um, the yarn ended up being it was I aimed to have six hundred grams of yarn, and I think I ended up with almost seven hundred or 750 grams of yarn in the box. I didn't do a final tally, but in the last minutes of, you know, going through, I added some 20 gram skeins to complement some of the 50 gram skeins that were in there. So sorry, not sorry. I really had <laughs> overdid it a little bit, but I had so much fun doing it. And that for me was enough. And I really hope that everybody who got one is really enjoying it and is enjoying the unboxing and hearing more about the colorways that are in there. And again, if you want to find out more about that, you can definitely follow me on Instagram because I'm revealing each day up until Halloween. So anyway, so that's really all I have for you guys today. I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that you're having a wonderful week and I hope that you're knitting some lovely things. Um, I know I am in my, ah, I can't even put my foot up. I know I'm in my hand knit socks today because it is freezing outside. So, um, 
Until next time, I hope you guys enjoy the fall season and I will try to upload as soon as I can, as soon as I have another update for you guys. And um, the yarn, the yak yarn, the yak yarn, this should be going up into the shop. This, oh, what a lovely combination, I love this. Um, this should all be going up into the shop this coming Saturday, which is the 26th, the 20 something, so. 20, nope, 27th, <laughs> 27th. So the, these yarns, these yak yarns, they're gonna be in 50 gram skeins. These will be in the shop Saturday, October 27th at 1 p.m. So you can come on over there and find them in several places, but I will be sure to add them to the new to the shop listing section so that you know exactly where to find them right away but I am just in freaking love, like look at that. I'm just in love with these and I'm so happy that I did tonals. Um, I love doing speckles, but there is something so incredibly satisfying about putting solid colors together. <laughs> I just can't even, I just can't even. So um, I hope that you all enjoy like even like, oh man, lovely, lovely. Ooh, I wish I could wear yak. I wish it didn't make my face itch <laughs> because I would be making a lovely cow with all of this. So anyway, I digress. That's the end of it. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye!